Hey there, hi there, hello there, internet dwellers, and welcome to another episode of the GC Informer. I'm Orange Lightning, and I will be your host for this rather late in the day weekend episode, so let's get straight into it. Something I found quite interesting um, that's come up recently is The Division is looking into the possibility of a single player campaign. <gasps> All those people who touted the death of single player, well, maybe it's time it made a pretty sizable comeback. So this has come about because the game's creative director, whose name I cannot pronounce, let's call him Julian, I want to say Geraghty, but I'm not sure. There could be silent G's all over the place, I don't know. But Julian did tweet out that he loved the idea of a single player campaign spin-off of The Division where you play as an agent trying to find his way back to his family after everything has gone down. So this tweet seems to have just come out as a little bit of a test just to see how fans would react to it, would people be interested in this idea? And the answer it seems to resoundingly be yes. People are very interested in this idea. It seems to be one of the things that perhaps has come out about The Division is that the characters do feel quite empty to play as, even though Julian did actually point out <laughs> that the characters are supposed to be you. But at the same time, The Division has kind of created this world which does seem like it might be more interesting, perhaps, if you did have more actual story to kind of explore this world more, a bit more lore and a bit more interest in that way. Perhaps being a little bit more similar to something like Days Gone where you actually explore this world as a character rather than just you're dropped in and you make up your own story. From other games that we have seen, I feel there is still a very, very strong audience desire to have a story that you play through, a character that you can connect with. I mean, I know that's something huge for me, maybe that's why I've never really been that interested in The Division, as... Uh, it looked cool and it looked kind of fun to play, but I'm a very narrative-driven person myself, so... If they're going to put a single player campaign into the game, I do find that interesting and it seems a lot of other people who retweeted this also find it interesting. So because of this, uh, Julian Geraghty <laughs> uh, followed up his tweet with a short and sweet message that a single player campaign is not something people are violently opposed to, so maybe it is on the cards. If that is something you'd be interested in, perhaps this Division spin-off could relate to an entirely different audience, which would be a, a pretty cool thing to do. Moving on to something a little bit less on the this is really interesting scale, uh, Shenmue 3 has hit the news again. Uh, I'm sure everyone by now who follows Shenmue 3 is up and familiar with the drama of the PC release now only coming to the Epic Store and everyone who funded it so that they could get it on Steam are now getting the option to be refunded or wait for it to come out on Steam because apparently it still will. The uh, Epic Store release is a timed release so it will still come to Steam but that would be later on. Well it's in the news again because apparently it's not going to be the completion of Rio's story, which is what a lot of people thought it probably was going to be, considering the amount of time between Shenmue 2 and Shenmue 3, <coughs> hello Kingdom Hearts style wait here, a lot of people were expecting it to wrap up Rio's story, because oh my goodness, how long could we end up waiting for Shenmue 4? It's not going to. Nope. The series creator Yu Suzuki? Yes, Yu Suzuki has confirmed that by the end of Shenmue 3, you will only be 40% of the way through Ryo's story. Wow, that's not even halfway, that's not even 50. That still leaves 60% of story. So that's one big thing, but the more surprising aspect is that during an interview with US Gamer, uh, Yu Suzuki also expressed doubts about the creation of the game to begin with. Now, originally on Kickstarter, it was given a goal of $2 million in order to make the game a thing. 
and it smashed that out of the water by making more like seven million dollars. But what's worrying is that uh, Yu Suzuki has now revealed that the previous game in the Shenmue series actually cost 47 million dollars to make. That's huge considering that that was for the original Shenmue that came out in 1999 and when you think that we're 20 years on from that and how far games have come and what people expect Shenmue to now look like, that's going to be a big old jump. Yu Suzuki actually said that during the Kickstarter campaign, it would probably need more like $10 million to actually make a true open world Shenmue experience. But he is feeling a little more confident now with the support of Sony and Deep Silver to kind of assist with the uh, Kickstarter campaign as well, so there is still hope for this game. But that is still something to bear in mind and it is still a little worrying. So Shenmue was delayed as well, it's now not coming out until November. Hmm, it's gonna be an interesting game when it comes out. I've never played a Shenmue game, I did actually recently buy Shenmue 1 and 2 uh, re-releases on PS4, so I was gonna check it out before the third one came out, but hmm, <laughs> it is, it is concerning. And my final little story for today, anyone who is checking out Ubisoft at E3 may have been intrigued by Gods and Monsters, a small teaser that they showed right at the end of the show about a new IP. Very, very little was shown, it was just a very small CGI cinematic -y trailer, a very small one. But it did get a few people talking and it was interesting. Well, a little bit more information has now been released about this game. Basically, it's pulling a lot from um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but taking it into an entirely mythological route. What I mean by that is the uh, creative heads at Ubisoft have said how much they enjoyed working on the world of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but were very limited to the sort of historical constraints that Assassin's Creed games like to follow and really wanted to push the mythology side of, of Assassin's Creed and so this is kind of the sort of vehicle that Gods and Monsters is taking. It's going to be very light-hearted, lots of humour, uh, it's being told from the perspective of Homer talking, um, telling the story to his grandchildren who will keep interrupting with, I'm sure, little humorous comments here and there. But it's actually going to be very central around resource and stamina management as well. I'm kind of thinking, also looking at the trailer of the game, maybe a sort of Breath of the Wild feel to it, which is cool, you know. There's also mentions of using things like double jumps in order to uh, reach the height of a cyclops so that you can hit him in the eye. Um, so sort of tr strategic battles, but also by having things like double jumps, that does suggest there's going to be a lot more platforming elements in this game, which I'm all about because I grew up in the age of the golden age of the platformer, so I do like me a good platforming game. So these recent updates, all they have done is make me even more interested for this game, so I am itching to see some gameplay of it now. To be honest, who doesn't love a good Greek mythology setting as well? Sounds like a really interesting new IP game, taken a lot of things from Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but throwing in a lot more platforming elements to it, a lot more Breath of the Wild, as I said before, sounds like it might also have been quite the influence here. So yeah, this sounds like a really interesting game to keep, keep watch over. And that's all for today's episode of the news. I hope you've enjoyed it. Stay tuned to Gamecast for more content all the time, every time. There's so much on the horizon. I have some reviews I'm working on. I'm still working on that show as well. And we have some new shows in the works from other creators. And all your favorites are still here, of course. Obviously, pop along to our Discord as well. We chat nonsense in there all the time. <laughs> Anyone's welcome to come and join in. And yes, thank you again so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you all again real soon.